the writer and producer of the plus side. I'd like to welcome you. And thank you for coming out and supporting our production. Just a few reminders for you before we get started. If you would take a moment at this time to make sure that your cell phones are turned off. Make sure that, uh, and also we can hear when it vibrates. So just make sure that they are turned off. Also, if you would do us a favor and make sure that you do not take any pictures. And the last instruction that I have for you before we begin is that you enjoy the show. And at this time, I now give you Always all up in Belinda's purse. 
As long as you get paid, does it matter who's doing it? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like, like a dog could have mixed it better. That's how it always makes them. And yet you're on number four. Girl, never mind them. Lenny, can you see what your future has been drinking from over here? It looks like um wine, white wine. Tell Nick to add a nice bottle of white wine to your tab and send it down for him and his friend. Um, okay, yeah, is that what they're drinking, Nick? It is cool like that. But you're not worried about how much you're spending? Those guys are drinking Riesling. It's like $100 a bottle. Oh, there you go again. You got a promotion for crying out loud. Melinda? Mm. It's fine. Just put the bottle of wine and the apple martinis on my cap. <laughs> now, go down there and introduce yourself. Let them know that you're the one who ordered that bottle of wine. Oh, no, but I, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. You can and you will with either one of us holding your arm. I just got a promotion. That's much harder than going to speak to two complete strangers, right? because they're not as big. I see it all the time working here. I know, I know I'm not skinny, Nick, but you have to be so blunt. That's almost kind of rude, don't you? Sorry, so I didn't know the BC way of saying it. Look, you're a nice girl. You don't need people taking advantage of you like that. You're not an ugly girl. Just lose a little weight, and, and the guys will come buy you drinks, not the other way around. Thanks, I think. Do you like being the designated driver while they're on the dance floor all the time? Stop, Nick. Stop while you're behind. <sighs> Belinda, I used to be bad, too. And one day, I, I saw this guy on TV, 
promising to make me look and feel better if I bought his DVDs. So I did. Did it work? <laughs> you ever seen a fat bartender in Retro? It's not fair, but it's the truth. Let me help you help yourself. Step one is looking in the mirror and seeing who you are. Step two is accepting that you can change. Uh, but step three is probably the most important step of all. Then why is it a number one now? <laughs> Never mind that. Step three is wanting to change. Do you want to change, Belinda? What you spent on drinks tonight, you could have bought Alan Steele's program. Alan who? Alan Steele. He's the guy who changed my life. And he can quite possibly change yours too. For 99.99, you too can be on the way to change of your life. <coughs> so, what do I get again for one hundred dollars? A better question would be, how much do you think you're worth? Why can't you just answer the question? Is this some kind of pyramid scheme? Do I have to go find ten of the fat friends to bring in or something? <laughs> left in my bag. <laughs> First in the series. Do you want to change or not? I don't know. I mean, can you guarantee me that it'll work, Nick? I mean, who wants to be the designated fat friend? We're talking $100. Uh, it's $99.99. <laughs> and you just wasted that on two complete strangers. How about investing that same amount in you?
his bro. You know, I haven't seen you since you're about this high. Then he don't ever look so much like your mother. I bet that dude would be so proud. I don't know who y'all talks about more, you or your mother. <laughs> you mean my mother? My Aunt Janet talks about me and my mother more than she does beat me? What I meant to say was, um, you knew my mother? Of course I did. She made an impression on everyone she'd meet, and not too many people can do that, at least in a good way. You have a sense of humor, I see. <laughs> oh, you thought I was kidding about the bee theater? <laughs> Maybe you two should play about that. Oh. <laughs> well, Sally, you were <laughs> Lap in church. Sure, these days you couldn't get her to go to church if the Lord Himself sent her a friend request on that Facebook. All these kids on the back. You know, Janet, it's not just for kids anymore. I have over 500 friends, if you can believe that. Oh, well, good for you, Sally, but the only friend I need is Jesus. And what a friend we That's have. Yes, yes. Now that you won't have any Holy Ghost left for church. Oh, mm -hmm.
who was going to take care of me. The only father I knew was this man in the frame that she said was my father, but he never stepped out of the frame before, so why would he do it if she died? I can still see my mother crying when she had to call my father's side of the family because my aunt was always too busy for me and her. Well, let I explain to you why I couldn't take you in after Ruth died. You're still going to hold that against me. My husband didn't want to have any more mouths to feed, and I didn't trust him enough anyway to have a young girl around. Now, how, how many times is it going to take you to believe me? So, in other words, it was your final decision, oh, not your husband's? Lord Jesus, you just won't let me live it down, but you had to go live with your father's folks, will you? It couldn't have been that bad. You're right, it wasn't that bad. It's because of my father's folks paying off his house after he died, and you now have a place to stay. Ironic, isn't it? My dying mother trusted you to do right by her and by me. You've never seen fit to apologize to me for a you know, bit stop, stop, it. stop it! Stop it! Stop it! But there's no going back. Linda, you're not that helpless eight-year-old girl anymore. You're this beautiful young woman now. Release that Release the hurt. You're living with your aunt now, which is what your mother wanted. We all make mistakes. And it takes a much bigger person to release than to hold on to that hurt. Do you think I came to know Christ because I was a saint? Because I was a saint. Linda, your mother joined the church just a little she proved you could be a plus-size woman and still get high off the ways of the world. She was crying out for help. And thank God I knew that sound and was able to step in. A stranger had to tell me this about my mother? I didn't tell you because I didn't think that was the most important aspect of your mother that you needed to know or remember. No. You did it to protect her. Or better yet, to protect yourself. But you missed what? the point, child. The reason I tell you this is to let you know that your mother wasn't perfect. Only God is perfect. Well, then perfect God should have been stamped on her death certificate instead of diabetes. You may have saved her from this lifestyle of sin, but why didn't perfect God save her from a lifetime of poor eating habits? You know my mother had to poke needles in her stomach every day poking her fingers, taking her blood sugar after a lifetime of poor eating habits. So I'll leave my faith up to a measly $100 DVD as opposed to this perfect God who just doesn't seem to hear the prayers of little fat black girls or their fat black mothers. What is this DVD exactly? The scam. That's what it is. <laughs> I tell you. Is this it here? I'm going to throw it in the trash. Don't. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Give it. Watched Alan steal videos together. Is that a 
day that goes by when he doesn't thank me. No harm will come to Belinda by watching Alan steal. <laughs> Belinda, baby, I feel awful. I could have done so many things to help you. Well, and the guilt that I feel, baby, for sending you away, that alone keeps me in prayer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry as many times as you need me to be. Well, that means more to me than you told her, Janet. <clears throat> really, it does. But I'm okay. And you just wait and see. Before you know it, I'll be one of the girls with Yevelyn anyway. Well, why would you even want to be? Now, if this Alan Steele person wants you to dress like they do and start drinking and carrying on, maybe it's best you stop before you get started. Well, whoever these two young ladies are, they obviously haven't met Mr. Alan Steele. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the word I would use to describe those two. Unless it's ladies of the evening. Oh, I'm son, Janitor. You can't see the stone. Whatever. Just know that I think you're fine the way that you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, Sally, let's get out of here before it's late. Reverend already has me on his list because I told him I wasn't helping Gladys in the kitchen this morning. <laughs> he hates her cooking. But since she wants to run everything, let the congregation eat her chicken salad and have to pick out the bones. <laughs> 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 Are you forgetting something on this Sabbath, Aunt Janet? No, I don't think so. You got your Bible. You know Janet's had planners had a field day the last time we tried to use her. You know she did. change yourself. Now, I don't know the reason, but if I had to take a guess, I'd say it had something to do with your body. Yeah. But he is cute. His body is not just made up of what's on the outside. It's also made up of what's on the inside. So how you feel on the inside plays a part in how your body looks on the outside. I never thought about it like that. Now, before we go any further, let me ask you a question. Who are you watching this DVD for? What kind of question is that? Seems like a simple enough question to answer, right? But is it real? What is that? <laughs> Smile! He's so cute. Without even knowing it, you may be watching this DVD for someone other than yourself. Is everyone at the office then? Has a significant other been dropping subtle hints here and there? Now physically, you can't lose weight on behalf of someone else. That's impossible. But psychologically, the pounds you want to shed and the body you want to showcase could be for someone other than yourself. Fast forward past this So before you fast forward past my introduction, before you answer these questions, I want you to take a minute and reflect on what I've said so far. Can you do that for me? Thanks. I'll even set my watch. Time's up! Now that you've reflected, who are you watching this DVD for? Oh, you really expect me to answer that question? Well, let me first say that there is no right or wrong answer. What's important is that you're watching. And now that I've been entrusted to help you change, let's get started. All right, now attack it, Mr. Steele. Now, I know this will sound very elementary, but I have to ask. What do you see? This is that stuff Nick was doing. Now you see me holding up a mirror looking at myself, right? And if you held up a mirror looking at yourself, 
looking into it, you'd see yourself, right? Yes, I'd see me. Now, do you see yourself as someone who is changeable? Oh. I want to share with you why I chose Gray for the DVD case. It's because of Gray matter. The regions of our brain that control such thoughts as hearing, seeing, and emotions. How you see your body now and in the future, all has to do with what's in your head. Now, over the course of this program, where you go, I'll follow. Not the other way around. Now, I'll show you the exercises. I will explain the diet. But I can only go where you lead. Well, that's all for the introductory section. The rest of your life starts now.
about the last time you filled up. Did you think twice about what bread you would use? Most of us don't. We're comfortable with our bread because of either price, convenience, or what the car manual said. But what if the science came out that by switching grades, the lifetime of our cars could be extended and maybe some repair costs would go down? Would you switch? Go out and buy a new car. But you can't go out and buy a new body. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> Science is out, folks. That by paying more attention to your bodies now about what you put into it will definitely lower maintenance and repair costs down the road. So with that, I will give you 10 minutes to write down everything in your refrigerators, freezers, and cabinets. I'll even give you two minutes to find a pen and paper. And when I say go, Write down what's fueling your body. Then we'll toss it or toast it. Well, my watch is set and ready. Now go. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Ben, I'm watching for sorry. Um, but I'm not leaving this couch for now. I'll just take some mental notes over the next few minutes and I'll do all that other stuff next time I watch. <laughs> Belinda, Belinda, wake up. I even brought a pen and paper so you can join the rest of us for this very important exercise. Shh, doing very important exercise. Didn't you say somewhere we need to put nine to seven hours of sleep every night? Yes, true, I said that, but not during my session. Linda, when are you going to start taking this DVD and by extension both you and me? Instead of one each, about to be of two different kinds. Are you two 
aware of the time. We know it's late. We're sorry. Uh, we were just looking for Belinda. Look, yeah, there she is. Hi, Belinda. Belinda. Belinda, where have you been? We've been worried sick about you. What's up with the exercise gear? I just took a little time off of work because I wasn't feeling myself lately. By exercising on a Saturday night? Well, are you feeling any better now? As a matter of fact, I am. Well, good. Change your clothes. We're going to retro. Uh, Belinda, tomorrow is Fellowship Sunday at church. Everybody is invited to come as they are. <laughs> Solomon tells us two are better than one. Oh, is he who follows the Lord. Aunt Janet, save me some kale chips. Don't wait up. I'm not gonna wear. <laughs> Situation as for exactly, and uh, as president of your fan club, I gotta think of ways to promote you. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking here in Chicago. And Nick, brother, I thank you. I mean, my manager totally missed this opportunity here in Chi Town. I mean, he's a New Yorker, and you know how they are. No other city in America exists except maybe LA. And my numbers, if I didn't see the receipts coming in, I swear you were giving away my DVDs here in the Windy City. And what's your secret? I might need to adapt that to my national plan. I mean, they're doing well all around the country, but man, you are killing them here in Chicago. And I might need to bring you on board. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? I mean, they're doing well because I'm telling the truth. You saw them before and after pictures of me. And I had the typical beer belly and a frown and those TV weight loss commercials. Now I can smile and pursue my acting career. Does that mean you're not interested in joining Team Steel? Right now, Alan, I'm keeping all options open. There's not a lot of glamour working behind a bar when you want to be on stage or screen. At the same time, I feel like I get to help people doing what I do now. This girl who's uh, been coming to Retro for a while now, I sold a DVD to her last week. I saw how her friends were taking advantage of her. By selling her one of your DVDs, I felt like I gave her back her life. <laughs> that right. Any issue fine? It's the first Saturday she hasn't been here in a while, and I hope she's okay. And Nick, brother, I mean, is she hot? I mean, who does she look like? Beyonce, Holly Berry, Giselle Bunchy. <laughs> Those three don't need your fitness DVDs. <laughs> okay, hey, now I have something for everybody. Just like my book, What to Drink at the Bar Without Destroying Your Diet. But I'm going to take it by your answer that I might need to find another piece of this bar here tonight. Seems like this girl you mentioned is not up to the man of steel's normal taste and standards. It's all good. Listen, I'm going to disappear. Think about what I said on joining Team Steel. Now, I know that working at a bar might be a fun and easy job for you, but basically, you ain't going to get rich doing it. I know what it's like to be broke. Trust me. You couldn't pay me to go back to that lifestyle. <laughs> Cinderella and her two evil stepsisters. Hi. Great to see you, Belinda. I wish I could say the same for your groupies. When, what are you having? I think I'll have a CC and 7 up. Oh, that sounds good, girl. I'll have the same thing. Belinda, will you have what your best friends are having? No, a water will do. Alright. So, uh, no more playing follow the leader, or is that just for this week? Well, Alan Steele says that soda should be avoided at all costs, especially diet. So you actually tore off the wrapper and put in the DVD. Probably. Give me some credit, Nick. Did I just hear what I thought I heard? Yeah, Alan Steele, his program, you know, Nick and I are both following it. So that explains 
used to work out clothes on a Saturday night, which we were talking about last week. So you had to wait till us visit from the Nick and sit on the way over? After we asked you a thousand times. You know you could have come to me and get me, right? But anyway, if this will make you happy, then that's still great news. I see his commercials on TV all the time. If I didn't have his body already, I'd probably buy Alan Steele's program too. <laughs> and uh, Brenda, you know, brace yourself. He's here tonight, and you'll get the chance to meet her. Wait, but the week I've been having Nick don't give me, are you serious? Linda, I wouldn't make this up, even if I were heartless like you believe. <laughs> it was a last minute addition, but the word still got out, it seems. Uh, so with Alan Steele up in here this week, this place is going to be even more packed than usual. You know what? I can go home now. Well, if you do, it won't be in my car. I'm not going anywhere with Evan Steele here. <laughs> okay. So he has a video out. Big deal. What is he supposed to make his grand entrance anyway? Then you do care. You know that man is hotter than anyone in your times, too, so stop acting like you couldn't be bothered. What? I'm just asking when he's getting here so that I don't have to start using my elbows as weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> he's all right. He ain't all that. But, yeah, why is he coming tonight anyway, Nick? Not that it matters, but... Well, you're looking at the president of Alan Steele's fan club, so I'm sure this responsible. Plus, he's promoting his new book and announcing the opening of his new gym here. So we got a lot of reasons to celebrate. We'll pick anyone. So Nick, you're the president of Alan Steele's fan club. That would make you like, what's the word? Nick? Oh, <laughs> groupie. <laughs> Is that the word you're looking for? It takes one to know one. No wonder you like throwing it around. Be nice, girls. It's a good thing that Nick has done, even though he's been holding out on me. Melinda, sweetheart, I'm sorry. This whole diet stuff. You need to see this for what it is. It is a scam. Pay this amount, you can have abs that look like this. Pay that amount, you can have a body like that. Yeah, right. Well, Linda, all these people are in here tonight, not to see what you drink at the bar, but to see Ellen Steele because they're obviously celebrity hounds. It's so typical, Yeveline. You're missing the whole point. Oh, I'm missing the point, you say. The point is for Ellen Steele to sell as many of his products as possible to a willing and gaping public. Millions of dollars are spent yearly on people like him and his snake oil words. The scam. Try telling that to the people that have lost weight but gained their health and sense of self thanks to people like Alan Steele and other dedicated professionals that want to see people lead better lives. The obesity is an epidemic this country's facing. Personally, I'm happy that people who'd be out drinking anyway are interested in learning about how to do it in a healthier way. He's a professional. He can't just give his products away. They're reasonable and affordable at today's rates. <laughs> you have to qualify how great a deal is. Now wait, F.D. Both of you made some good points, but I have to side with Nick on this one. Have you tried riding the bus lately? This woman was literally taking up my seat and hers too. People like that need some help. Honey, people like that are beyond help. And Yeveline doesn't do buses, dear. You can't be serious. Do you mean that, Yevely? Now, I don't think anybody is beyond help. Have you ever stood in the grocery store while people look in your cart, judging you based on what you buy? Or look at you while you place your order in the McDonald's line as if you had the audacity to enjoy french fries? Until you walk in someone else's shoes, keep your mouth I, mean, I was as skeptical as the next person, but I bought the DVD. What am I supposed to do? Just sit back and do nothing? Just accept my fate? I mean, what are fat people supposed to do? Don't blame the skinny person here. All I'm saying is that fat people just seem comfortable being fat. Why else would they come up with slogans like, big is beautiful? I mean, who has ever seen a plus size model in lingerie? Who thinks that's sexy? Who are we kidding? Instead of encouraging fat people to lose weight, society just keeps on pushing it. I love you, Yeti. You know that I do. But what are these people supposed to wear if they lose weight? These people. A moo I don't know. Just stay away from the damn kitchen refrigerator is all I'm saying. 
And yes, I do stare at them when they're in a McDonald's line waiting to get crap out of the vending machines. Ice cream, cookies, pop, donuts. I see it all. And for God's sake, why do fat people eat so much red meat? Hot dogs, pork chops. I'm guessing they're fat vegetarian. Do they even exist? Have any of you ever seen them? It's like looking for a lioness monster. <laughs> so these people aren't allowed to try and lose weight at all? They can't wear lingerie and feel sexy. They can only sit in the moo moo and wish away the fat. If that's how you want to think of it, I don't care. It's not my problem. They? Anyway, Nick, I'm getting restless. What time is Alan going to be here? He'll be here any minute. But I can't just let Devlin get away with insulting every overweight person in the country, in the world for that matter. Because she can eat or drink whatever she wants. Doesn't give her the right to badmouth people that can't help themselves. So you really think that for this body, I just wake up in the morning and go about my regular business? I even drink what I want because I'm willing to sacrifice. People can help themselves. That's if they want to. Gwen and I practically live at the gym. Yep, he's right. I was with you for a minute, Nick, but we do work our butts off. There's no magic wand to all this. You know what they say? No pain, no gain. You're just a waffler. You can't make up your mind who you want to side with. Just admit it. There are no sides other than do you want to be fat or not? Belinda, Gwen and I were waiting for the right time to invite you to join us at our gym. We get a company discount. There's tons of scams and scam artists out here. Look, I know about it. I lost both a brother and a sister to them. You all have never met my family. If you had, you'd wonder how in the hell I could be one of them with this figure. Well, it's because I struggle every day. I did something about my weight. I didn't try taking any shortcuts or buying any damn DVDs from someone who knows they don't exist. You really wanted to help Belinda? You would have just given her the DVD, or better yet, told her to watch what she eats at the exercise. I have no regrets about what I did. I didn't make any money off selling the DVD. I sold it to her because I believe in it. It helped me. Ooh, you really are stupid. The brains behind all this is Alan Steele. Here you are selling his DVD and not even getting a cup. Debbie, that's no. Stop it! All of you. Can I just sit here in peace and wait for Alan to get here? Is that asking too much? So, Belinda, what? since you've been watching Alan Steele's video, if he were here right now, what do you think he'd tell me that I could drink? <laughs> Can't believe it, I'm all worried about my drinks. At least have a glass right. of red wine. That's good for you. It's proven to fight against heart attacks. It is also believed to fight tumors and cancer cells, not more than a couple glasses, though. Really? I don't know that any alcohol is good for you. Alan Steele is the only one who can read. So what are the health benefits of CCs and 7-Up? Of the yeah. Apple Martini? <laughs> I got you, you know it. Whatever! Look, the man of the evening. How uh, are <laughs> Steele's right? Just as we speak. <laughs> oh! Nick, buddy, I'm back. Man, I see why this is Chicago's hottest club. I dig this place. <laughs> I don't believe I've been formally introduced to your uh, lovely lady friends. Right, okay. Uh, so these are three of my regular and best customers. Well, one is, anyway. That is Gwen. That is Eveline. Yeveline! This here, this is Belinda. Now, oh, pleased to meet the three of you. Oh, the pleasure's all ours. Nice to meet you, John. So, uh, Mr. Steele. Belinda here has your first DVD. She's a big fan of yours. Isn't that right, Lenny? The Gothic Penny, you're embarrassing me. Oh, no need to be embarrassed. I am fat and flat. Oh. Now, should I call you Belinda or Lenny? Oh, it's whatever rolls off your tongue easiest. <laughs> That's sweet. But others will only identify you by how you define yourself. As far as you know, my name could be John Doe, but since I tell people that my name is Alan Steele, that's how they refer to me. Well, then, in that case, the window. So, are you going to tell us about this book of yours, or what? <laughs> this uh, <clears throat> book of mine has a name, Miss uh, Yveline. And might I add, what a beautiful name that is. It's original. 
I haven't heard it before. Oh, that's because you haven't met my aunt. I'm my cousin. No, I'm my grandma. I'm a niece either. Mm -hmm. Even so, my name's still the most unique thing of the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What Yemi means is, what led you to writing this book? What was your inspiration? <clears throat> well, as Nick here can tell you, I get lots and lots of mail. Now, I'm so blessed to be able to help so many people. I live for this. And my mail lets me know that I'm doing something right. Anyway, many people will write me wanting to keep up their diets and lifestyle changes, but not wanting to sacrifice them with the fun they've gotten accustomed to having before they welcome change into their lives. Now, I say in my DVDs to avoid soda and too much juice, but people will write me and say they get tired of just drinking water at the club and didn't know what to do. So, with a little research and some case testing, I decided to put out my book entitled, Tonight's Special, What to Drink at the Bar Without Destroying Your Back. And the conclusions? Uh, well, um, they're in the book. So you're just not going to tell us what it is? We have to buy the book in order to be healthy at the bar tonight. <laughs> well, yes and no. Now, I'll be making sample drinks from my book here at the bar tonight at no cost. And if people like them, I'll make them full serving. And hopefully they'll be encouraged by the book. Now, uh, are you in disagreement with my motives, young lady, with a very pretty and unique name? Were you not listening to me just a moment ago? Or did the word unique get lost in translation during all your BS? But anyway, you know, if your goal is to help Americans with their nutrition and all, why don't you just use your celebrity and volunteer at a weight loss center or join a presidential task? Oh, you mean the same weight loss centers that charge you to be a member? So what you're really asking me is why don't I just do what I do for free? In so many words, yes. You either want to help people or you don't. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you uh, buy your toothbrush and toothpaste? Or do you get it for free from companies that just want to uh, promote oral hygiene? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you pay rent or mortgage or do you live rent free because your landlord just wants to fight homelessness? This is America. Wow. This is capitalism. There's either going to be a demand for products in the marketplace, or there isn't. It's economics 101. You say that with a straight face. I don't know how con artists like you get off exploiting the problems of real people. It's just wrong. You have a right to sell what you do, but I don't have to like it. And you don't have to buy it. <laughs> That's the beauty of what I do. But what I do is perfectly legal and it's beneficial. I'm reminded of that every day. And I'm reminded every day about all the false claims and, and hopes that products like yours put forth. You know, real people die trying to lose weight quickly. And they leave behind real family members to mourn them. Yes, I mean, have you seen any of my DVDs? No, and I don't plan on it. Uh -huh. I already know the steal about how results are not typical at Bay Theory. You people need to be frank. So you are, in effect, writing off each person that has sent me a thank you note. You're saying that all the mothers that thanked me for my charitable works don't have the common sense to see me as a fraud in your work. Or you're saying that all the people that came here tonight to buy my book can't think for themselves because my outward allure is too captivating and strong? Are you saying you're smarter than all these other people? You're twisting my words! <laughs> True traveling salesman. Well, sweetheart, I'm afraid there's not much I can do to convince you otherwise. I'll let my work speak for itself, and when it does, <laughs> others speak for me and what I do. I second that, Alan. I can vouch for what you do. Though I haven't done all of the workouts yet, bought all the DVDs, I am inspired to do more. <laughs> That's great. Tell me, what is your name again? Gordon? Linda, oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> Did you all just hear that? He can remember her name, but he can remember mine. That has nothing to do with how we look, does it, Alex Steele? Guys are all the same. Yevelyn, you're impossible. Uh, no, no, Nick, it's OK. Yevelyn, you're right. I owe Belinda an apology. What? The great Alex Steele is not perfect. Grape juice helps with the memory. You should try it sometime. For grapes. Read up on it. She's just being her typical child.
charming self, uh, no matter how embarrassing that is. Mm. Mm. She is up. And, and these are your friends? Promise me you don't have any enemies you want to introduce me to. <laughs> I mean, you called it gorgeous at least, right? So, you got it half right. Yeah. Right. You know, you guys should just really be nice. <gasps> Alan, didn't you say that you would do anything for the I mean, you believe those are my words? Yes. Yeah. Don't want you to do something else charitable tonight and take the limit here out on a date. Oh. Excuse me, I'm no one. Yeah, she's no one. I'm nobody's charity case. I second that. That Belinda is a beautiful young lady. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are many guys who would be thrilled to take her out for a night out of town. Ooh, I don't know about that, Yevi. Sounds to me like you'd like to leave that date to one of those many thrilled men that are out and about in the town. Uh, exactly. I put him on the spot and all that everybody's equal crap. Out the door and out the window. Look, Jimeline, you've really gone too far this time. If this is a friend of mine, he didn't come here to be disrespected by that lashing and poor tongue of yours. Show him some respect or get out of this bar. Whoa! <laughs> Nick, buddy, I don't think that'll be necessary. I'm enjoying this verbal jack thing going on. I like a woman that knows how to speak her mind. That's not about me. You don't need to show me because I'm what you want when I'm like the limit to become. What? It's true. Admit it. Why else would he be stressing the weight so much? Yellow men come to me too. And, and, and it's not just both sexes are concerned about their health. And it's not just about weight. It's about being proportionate for your size and meshing with your body mass index. It's about eating right and being fit. Look, it's getting late, Ellen. Does Belinda get her date with you or not? Yeah, Ellen, a date with Lydia or not. We're waiting. Alan, you don't have to do this. Really, you don't. I'm sorry they put you on the spot like that. It's just part and parcel of getting to know them. No, Belinda, it's okay. Look, I'd be honored to go out on a date with you. I think the world knows I'll be relocating here to Chicago and opening up my first gym, and uh, I could use a dog. You know Thank what? you, Miss Young.
yes, it's good that she's getting out of the house more yes. instead of sitting around watching reruns of black and white shows with her aunt. <laughs> I live my life. I guess it's time for her to live hers. So you don't think he's good enough for her? Well, is anybody good for anybody? How do you know? How can you tell? I thought Cliff and I would be together forever, especially after Tristan was born. You know how that turned out. I don't have either one. Cliff is with another woman, and Tristan, my baby boy, is going around this world, nether regions of the world, marketing himself as Delish Trish. Ooh. It's a living, I guess. Well, I'm living with my niece or off the one, depending on who's telling the story. I thank God for her. She's about all I got left these days. Honestly, can't say what I do. Uh, strong drink. Sally, I don't know what you're implying, but it's wrong. You're wrong. Am I? No, oh, Janet, you want to talk. Well, Sally, I'm ashamed. I, I can't believe in myself, but I've been wishing for my own release to fail in love. I've got nothing, Sally. Nothing but that bottle you're holding and a guilty conscience. Oh, well, look, she's got everything. And she could take it away at any minute if she wanted to. I'm scared I'm going to be alone again. I feel it. She has new friends, a new promotion, a new man. She has everything but time for her aunt. I even tried cooking because all this new diet stuff she wasn't even interested. She's all grown up, Sally. Writing's on the wall. Well, she can't leave me, Sally. She can't. Janet, you may be a fish on land now, flipping and fluttering about. But don't give up. Never give up. Someone will come along and toss you back in the sea and you'll start swimming again. <laughs> romance please with they just look no further than Abraham and Sarah. They were far from spring Jesus <laughs> and from see that. Oh, no. <laughs> you we're know, nowhere near as old as they were when the Lord blessed them. There's still plenty of time for you to receive your blessing as well. Abraham and Sarah. Well, you sure can't quote that Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 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 Yes.
Miss Mike sure is nice. You could stand and learn a thing or two from her on Janet. I I'm going to let that one slide. <laughs> See, Sally's goodness is beginning to rub off on me. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to turn in. Uh, no fornicating in this house. She is. <laughs> Good night, Belinda. Good night, fitness guru. Good night, Aunt Janet. Good night, Auntie. Oh, no, no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> find my mind attractive. But Linda, that's not what I meant by saying that. Yeah, that's what you didn't say that I heard of. Linda, you don't think I find you physically attractive? Yes. I got involved in fitness because I wanted to help educate people about the importance of what to eat and the importance of exercise. Yes. I like a fit woman, but I also like a woman. Does that show you how? everything Nick was trying to say and it makes sense. Somehow I understand what Yeveline and Gwen were trying to do too, surprisingly. Because of you, I'm eating right, I'm exercising regularly and it's not going to be easy, but I've taken the first step on the journey of a thousand miles and I owe it all in a big way. A plus size way. To you.
Alan going to be here at all tonight, or? Why do you care, Nick? Jealous? Why would I be jealous? Because you're jealous. 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 Because you not me. Me neither. The bar is a place for mingling and socializing. With any luck, Linda's out on a date. She's not responsible for keeping you company on these Saturday nights. <laughs> you want the best for her? Wish her to find some happiness. Yeah, except his idea of happiness for Belinda is her sitting in his bar looking into his eyes. Sad and lonely and vulnerable while she buys more Diet Coke or water. Watered down apple martini. <laughs> as usual, are so wrong. It's because she was as you described that I got the DVD in the first place, was to boost her self esteem. Can you two say the same? And just what do you think we've been trying to do, Nick? Do you think you're the only one capable of showing Belinda happiness? We've been trying to boost our confidence as well. Just who do you think is even responsible for her even coming out? to such a place like Retro. She would have never in a million years got up to the two guys that she bought the wine for. She didn't even think she had the chance to go out on a date with someone like Ellen Steele <laughs> on her own. The only guy she was spending time sharing her thoughts with was you. And what do you do? Why, you just soak in everything she says like a sponge and then you squeeze her out. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you encourage her to go out and mingle, Nick? Why did you just keep her nestled like her Aunt Janet? Whose idea was it for her to be the designated fat friend or DFF? Do you have any idea how hurt she was by that? That's your idea of the confidence boost. For future reference, Nick, never ever call a woman fat. Sounds like you need to get from behind this bar some more, man. I will never understand you two. Oh my god. Do you like Belinda, Nick? Look, Belinda's a nice girl. Nick and Belinda. <laughs> Yes. 
Since we're being honest, <laughs> when Yemeline challenged Alan to that date with you, I was angry and jealous at the same time. He, he hesitated to say yes, but he was my guest, I'm the president of his fan club, couldn't punch him like I wanted to. No one should hesitate to be in your presence. And when he did say yes, I felt like I would lost my chance with Who has more experience using the Allen Steel method than I do? We can work on our fitness and diets together. I know what exercises I can start you on right away. Belinda, I'm asking. Since things didn't work out with you and Alan, will you try working out with me? Nick, I'm, I'm flattered, I really am. I'm shocked too. But right now I think the only working I need to do is on me. At this point in my journey, I just, I kind of feel like I have to walk it alone. But as I progress, I'm sure I'll need a partner and just knowing that you're in my corner will be more than enough. Fair enough. And yes, Belinda, I will be in your corner. We count on that. Well, uh, can I at least ask you? 